Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everybody. This is Move Easy Yoga with Via online, and it's July 27th, almost August uh, 2020. I am going to take my picture off the screen and put Kathy on. Uh, she's going to be our model student. Thank you, Kathy. And we're going to start in the ordinary um, fashion. Now, today, Gloria better show up. <laughs> today, we're going to, for Gloria, at her request, we're going to do therapy balls um, for the neck and shoulders. There she is. But let's start in the ordinary fashion. We're going to do a Vegas and reset, and then we're going to get right into the therapy balls. So, but first, just remember where you are, notice where you are, take some breaths, feel the floor supporting your back body. And then bring your arms behind your head and release your fingers for vagus nerve reset. Just, we can call this the shifty eye move. Shifty eyeballs move. Um, it says, Colleen has started screen sharing. Please unshare your screen, Colleen. I think it was accidental, but please unshare. I don't, I don't think I can undo it. Maybe I can. No. You're going to have to unshare your screen, Colleen. And everyone's going to have to look at a little Kathy, a little <laughs> tile of Kathy while, oh. while Colleen unshares her screen. There. There we go. There we go. I don't think she intended to share her screen because um, it was just a Zoom screen. <laughs> so, anyway, here we are. Vegas nerve reset, hands behind the head, just to hold the head steady, and then look to the right with your eyeballs only. And wait for a Swallow, sigh, yawn, or gulp. <laughs> Come back to center. Eyeballs shift to the left, watching and waiting for an involuntary swallow, sigh, yawn, or gulp. Back to center, repeat this two more sets, right, left, right, left. Going back, 
and get get ready to um, for therapy balls in the neck and jaw series. So you can either use a small, you're going to start with them in the tote, and either use a large set called the Alpha, or a smaller set called the called um, Plus. And you'll want a brick underneath your, probably a brick underneath, a small brick underneath your head. And lying on your back with the therapy balls horizontal. Therapy balls horizontal. At the occipital ridge. Oh. And the first thing you're going to do. So your your legs should be could be bent. Knees bent is best. And then if you're if that's hard for you to keep your knees up like that, you might want to put a pillow or a blanket underneath your knees. Uh, so from here, what you're going to do is have the ball at the base of the skull and nod. Do these two. Nod, chin up, chin down. Chin up, chin down. Slowly, you may have to adjust the balls. If, if the balls aren't used to being there at, at the occipital ridge, the trick is to be sure that they aren't in the curvature of your cervical spine. They need to be up a little higher than that uh, to get the entire benefit of the, of the movement. So about six times. Nodding, chin up, chin down. And then, side to side. Side to side, same balls, same setup. <laughs> Side to side. It's not looking all the way to the right. We'll do that in a minute. So it's just a small side to side movement. And do that about six times. And then the last uh, set here, just make a figure eight with your nose. So stay at the same location and make an infinity sign or a figure eight with your nose. Reverse your figure eight. Come back to center and then go ahead and look all the way to the right. Look so far to the right that you're really the back of your neck uh, is on the uh, just the one ball. So you've looked as far right as you can go and now a nod. Chin up, chin down.
if you find a place that's really, really painful and the pain continues, stop working there and find another location in the neighborhood, but not so painful. If you come across tension and the tension starts to subside as you move over the balls or the balls move over the body, whichever way is happening at the moment, um, that you're in a good place. That's good pain. And then a small side to side movement, but not, not big. It doesn't, you don't go all the way back to the center. It's just a really move side to side. We'll work on this area again, uh, something near this area again, uh, when we're sideline. Come back to center and look to the left. So remember, you're looking so far to the left that the back of your neck, just up below your ear, behind your ear, is on the one ball, on the ball on the left. So you're really using only one ball. Next, uh, in the next set, we're going to take the, use only one ball and take it out of the way. But for now, just nodding. Slowly. Nice walk down the side here. on back to center. Take your ball out of the bag, one of the balls out of the bag. Uh, we're going to use just one ball. We're going to do the sideline series. And you're going to need a brick. If you have a small ball, you definitely need a brick. If, if you have a larger ball, maybe not. Your choice. But the first, the location of the ball is right behind the earlobe. You're lying sideways and place the ball and then nod your head. So this is an area that could be really holds a lot of tension in the eye right now. Nodding chin up. And now side to side. Make sure your shoulders are stacked, your hips are stacked, your knees are stacked, your ankles are stacked. And we'll stay on this side for the, the all of the movements, all, all of the movements on this side, then we'll flip over. The next movement, the next next location of the ball is at the cheekbone. So, find a place. There, there can be several different places you could work, and you could work in all of them if you had time. We're just going to find one, find, find a, a particular notch. And now, up and down. From side to side. And 
And now open and close your jaw six times or so. And now bring your um, ball to the last location, which is at the temple. And there are several, uh, similarly, there are several different locations that might feel good to you. You just need to find one. If you are doing this as a home practice, you could spend um, time at several, several of the temple locations, but just find one for today and chin up, chin down. Remember to be breathing at the same time. So keep breathing. And then try to see. And then come away from that and flip to the other side. Flip your body to the other side so you can still see Kathy on the big screen. And put the ball, one ball, behind your earlobe. Find a good place for it. Make sure your body's stacked well. And then just up and down. Yeah, if you're about to fall asleep, you're <laughs> you're doing that, doing it right. Oh, uh, it's too bad we'll have to get up off the floor and move move so. But with a lot less tension in neck and shoulders. Side to side. Move your ball to the second location um, at your jawbone or your cheekbone. There's a little little indent there. And you can find that and nod. Side to side. Open and close your jaw. Last location, the temple. Find a place. Nod over the ball.
from side to side. And then find your way, uh, let's just lie on our backs, just, just to try to capture and savor the movements that we've just done. Just lie on your back. You can put a, a washcloth or a brick underneath your head. Bend your knees, put your arms out in a T or maybe a um, cactus arms, bending the elbows. You can put your knees together and your, with your feet a little wider apart, that will release the psoas. This is kind of a rest, just a resting position. So you, can, you don't have to walk away quickly from, from the, the work you did. And whenever you're ready, come up to, to a floor seated position, your favorite floor seated position. And remember, you're going to be able to have find a good posture easier on a, in a floor seated position if you put a blanket or a brick underneath your hips. And we're just going to do, um, let me see what I have down here. <laughs> we're going to do shoulder shrugs first. So just sitting in your favorite floor seated position. Just lift the shoulders up to the neck, to the ears as high as you can get it. Scrunch, it's a scrunch. And then release. Pop in my shoulder, and that's good. And at the end. <clears throat> and then do right, left, right, left. So right, right shoulder, drop it, and left shoulder. And then bring your hands up into prayer pose, and we're going to do a mini spine twist. So mini, we're going to keep it as minimal as possible uh, with regard to involving other body parts. So the tips of your fingers go underneath your chin to keep your uh, neck from moving. And then you're just going to start on the right side, moving the rib cage and the uh, Thoracic spine rotating right. Sit tall. And return to center and go left. Come back. Again. Turn and left. This is the last time before we do a side bend. We'll return here to see if side bending helps us with rotation. Come on back. Bring your right hand on to the floor and then your left arm up and over. So you may want to bend your bottom elbow. While you're here, keep your hips on the floor. Take some breaths, and then go ahead and bring your elbow, top elbow, top arm and elbow forward, just to create another stretch along the latissimus dorsi, which 
badly needs your attention and love. Come back to center. So bring your arm back to center and then bring your torso back to center and go the other side. Left arm down, right arm up and over. Keep your hips on, even on the floor. Working now the side body, the, um, well, now the arm moves forward to work the latissimus dorsi. Arm, the top arm moves forward. Top arm and elbow and armpit move forward. Find a big stretch along the right side body. Take some breaths. Notice what's happening inside and outside. Come on back. You bring your arm back to center and bring, then bring your torso back to center. Let's do that one more time. Right arm down on the floor, left arm up and over. Check it out. Is, are your hips staying on the floor? Move your elbow, top arm, elbow, forward, elbow, armpit, forward. And then the arm comes back to center and then the torso comes back to the center. Uh, other arm, left arm up, on the floor, right arm over, up and over. And breathe. Working on the quadratus lumborum, that, that waist muscle, waistband muscle between the pelvis and the rib cage. And then go ahead and move your right, your upper arm forward as well as your armpit. And find another stretch at the back of the side body side and back body. Come on up. Arm up and then torso up. Let's do the spine twist again just to see if uh, it makes a difference in your rotation. It may or may not, but sometimes doing side bending, rotate, uh, doing rotation helps with, with um, Doing side bending helps with rotation. Go ahead and prayer pose for your hands and tuck your fingers under your chin. Now rotate uh, to the right, slowly. Come back, notice if you got any farther. No wrong answer, just a possibility and something to be aware of. Left. Come on back. Okay, now we're going to do the, the footwork, um, standing footwork. So you're going to need one therapy ball, a small one, the plus size, or if you have an original, but probably, but not the big alpha. And um, we probably should have written on Kathy's foot <laughs> with this before we did this. But we didn't, so maybe, oh, she has a pen? Well, there you go. So put one foot up so we can see it. Yep. Well, you might have to turn, yeah, you, yeah. If you turn around a little bit, you, they'll, people will be able to see your foot. So the first, we're gonna do all of these points. We're gonna put the ball, compress the ball at all of these six points. I don't want you rolling on the ball. That's it's. Some people, teachers like that. I'm. I. I don't. I could tell you why some other time. The point number one is up at the top, uh, just underneath the um, uh, the pad there in the middle. It's lower than that, Kathy. Oh. More like that. Yep. Yep. More like that. Mm -hmm. One. Say one. Okay. 
Then um, you go right to the middle of the arch, uh, the plantar arch, and that's two. And then three is just above, just on the edge of the heel. So that's three. So this is pretty easy, one, two, three. And then the fourth one goes to the outside, the outside of the center. So the outside of two. And then the fifth one goes to the inside of the center of the arch. And then the sixth one goes just underneath the big toe mound. Yep, right about there. Okay, good. Those are, those are take, a, take a gander, and uh, that's what we're aiming for. And we'll try to describe them as we go. But come, come on up to standing with your bowl. And this, this is kind of a balancing exercise, so you may want to have a chair or a safe point somewhere in case uh, all of a sudden um, you lose your balance. So standing with your feet forward, and let's start with the right foot. Position number one, just in the center, below the mound. We're going to stay for 30 seconds on each. Um, let me get the timer. So we're going to be a little longer on this one, but 30 seconds on each um, location. So I'm going to start now. And you'll hear the timer. And just stay, try, try not to lean over. It's tempting to look at your feet and see if you can do that while you're still in good posture. And just stay and breathe. Press and breathe. Move to location number two. And 30 seconds there. This is when you need a wall to put onto because uh, you're, you're neither here nor there, right? <laughs> Incoming call. That was just an incoming call. Okay, there's the timer. Go to the third location. Just in front of the calcane calcaneus, the heel. And this time your toes are on the floor. And now I'll see. That was position. That is position number three. We're finishing up. And now the fourth position is back to the center and to the outside of the foot. Breathing, standing tall if you can. You could do this if this is hard. Was hard is hard for you to stand for this long. You could do this uh, sitting. Obviously, you wouldn't have as much body weight on the feet, but um, it would work. Number five is to the inside center. Standing tall and stacking your ankles, knees, hips, shoulders. Mm -hmm. 
So in the last one, number six is just underneath the big toe mound. You know, and above the, the last location, the center location, center inside. Okay, switch sides. Place your ball um, in the beneath the, the mound that comes across the, the yeah the mound at the at the top of the foot and in the center. Number one, location number one. Number two, the center of the, of the foot, the center of the arch. Balancing, really. Breathing, enjoying, hopefully enjoying this. At this, these two, um, this therapy wall, ball work today was especially requested by Gloria. So if you guys have a special request, you can make it. Just let me know. Okie dokie. Number, we did two, this is three, right, Kathy? Three. Okay, the three is just above the heel, calcaneus, at the edge of the calcaneus. Number four, go back up to the center, but on the outside edge of the center of the foot. No, the inside, so first, no, go start over at the inside. Go to the inside first, and then we'll go to the outside, sorry. Four is inside center. No, five is. Five is inside center, hold on just a minute. Oh. Oh, four is outside. No, you're right. Four is outside center. Sorry. Sorry for the confusion. I, oh, I had to look. And I, let me say that I, I failed an IQ test when I was in elementary school because I got, um, got some things backwards. <laughs> so my, my perception of right and left is, can, can get very tricky. I mean, I think... All of a sudden, I had it all figured out, but it was wrong. That's what I did on the IQ test also. My mother, who was a school principal, was horrified. Oh my gosh. And now, number five, which is on the inside. Yep. 
You can't fail an IQ test, by the way. You, you know, it is what it is, right? Although it's, there's lots of bias in an IQ test. They were only devised, developed by human beings, imperfect human beings, with their own biases. But that wasn't the reason I failed that test. Last one, just underneath the big toe mound. You know, Michael does that to you, the right left thing. Yeah, I get that confused sometimes. And you know, inside out, it's it's all it, there's a, there's a, a learning. Di I have a learning disability of some sort. I, I haven't ever measured it, but I can get everything back. There you go. There you have it. That's the entire, um, the entire thing for the, the six-point foot release with therapy balls. Let's go ahead and do some more footwork. I think that would be good. So first of all, let's do heel lifts. Yeah, you can walk around for a while and see how that all feels. You can walk on your toes, you can walk on your heels. You can walk on, both, on the entire foot. <laughs> Let's go ahead and find a safe spot and do heel lifts with, and then we'll add the therapy ball to that. Heel lifts are one of my favorite movements for everything they do. Um, apparently, I was reading recently that calf raises, you know, ordinary calf raises and stretches are, are, can be injurious to the calf. <laughs> and that heel, instead, heel lifts actually are a lot better. But I like heel lifts for other reasons. That's one reason to like them. But um, the other thing is I think, especially when you add the, the therapy ball, go ahead and lift. So the feet are forward, pointing forward, lift and lower and lift and lower and up and down you go. But when you add the therapy ball, which we're going to do in a minute, um, you actually help the feet make and the glutes connect. And there is a connection between the two, but that, that tool helps you become aware of the, and improve the connection. Go ahead and put a therapy ball between the ankles and then press, keep the therapy ball in place while you continue to lift the heels. And you can stop. And let's do short foot, which is a favorite of mine. And hopefully you become so familiar with it and so attached to it that you do it uh, um, often in your world. Feet are straight forward. You're standing, you could be seated. You can all, you could do both feet. Let's try to do both feet together. See so see what that's like. For, so go ahead and lift your toes, both both sets of toes, and lower them. Spread them and lower them. Sorry, <laughs> and then press the the toe pads into the floor, and take some breaths, and continue to press. You should feel the activation of the, uh, the plantar uh, muscle that runs from front to back or back to front along the foot. 
and then release and do it again. Let's do it four times. Lift, thread, lower, toe pads press into the ground. We notice what is happening here on the inside of your body, especially. And then release and do it again. You can do this anywhere that you're standing. You can do it with your shoes on. So if you're, it's better without your shoes on, but if you're in a grocery store waiting in line, this is something you could do. It helps with gait, it helps with balance, it helps with plantar fasciitis. Do one more. And then go ahead and find your half round, and we're going to do the half round uh, series also. Your feet should feel really, if, if this is ankles, ankle work, feet and ankles should feel really good. So put the half round, um, I would put it on a wall, but Kathy's going to put it here so you can see her. And put, take your right foot and put it on the left end of the round so that you have, still have room for your feet side by side. And then just drop the heel. So that alone is a, is a nice calf stretch, but then you're going to go ahead and bend your ankle. This is an ankle activity, not a knee. You're going to just bend it forward about six times. And then go ahead and take the ankle bend, the ankle flexion, into the inside of the foot. So it's a small move, but it's going to uh, start to work on all of the ankle. So you're leaning, flexing your ankle towards the inside of the foot six times. This is kind of subtle to see on the screen. You may, it's better to, you may experience it better than you can see it. Angle going down here to go to see it. Yeah. And after you've done that about six times, then go to the outside. So this is a three-way ankle stretch. Go to the outside. So flex your ankle towards the outside of your foot. This is the smallest range of motion that, that you will experience. Outside of the foot. Towards the outside of the foot. And then switch sides. Now I'll make my foot here so you can see it. Okay. So remember the first thing you're going to do is uh, ankle forward flexion, directly forward flexion of the ankle. So the knee comes forward too, but it's not a knee movement. The knee comes forward because of the ankle flexion. And if, this, if there's, uh, the knee bothers you in this move, then you need to make it a smaller movement. And now inside, so flexion, ankle flexion towards the inside of the foot. And then ankle flexion toward the outside of the foot. Still flexing the ankle. That's still the movement that's happening. And finish up. Find your way onto your, onto your mat, on the floor, prone. We're going to do the back extension.
prone back extension. So if you have a sensitive pubic bone, you may want to put a towel or a blanket underneath your pubic bone for anything prone. Your arms are beside your uh, hips, palms up. You know this has three levels. You can stay at level one if you want, or you can uh, you know, move forward with level two. Uh, inhale to uh, begin to prepare, and then exhale, just lift the arms and the chest and the head. Stay here, take a breath, maybe come up a little bit higher if you can without involving the lower back. And then inhale to, re to prepare to return and exhale to return to the floor. That's level one. Level one, we're going to, two, we're going to add on. So we're going to do level one and then level two, which is airplane. To inhale to prepare. Exhale, lift the arms, the chest, the head. Take an inhale. Lift a little higher. And inhale to prepare to go into airplane and exhale to move the arms to airplane. Take an in, stay here, lift a little higher if you can, keep breathing. And then inhale to return to the floor. So inhale to prepare and then exhale to arms come down, all the way down. And on level three, we have to take two breaths to return because you have to return to airplane and then return to the floor. Okay, level three. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, lift. Lift the arms, the chest, the head. Stay here, lift a little higher if you can. Take an inhale to prepare for airplane and exhale, come into airplane. Arms out to the side. Take an inhale here. And then exhale and lift a little higher if you can. We're going to go into level three. Inhale to prepare and then exhale, arms by the ears. So inhale to prepare and exhale, arms by the ears. And stay here if you can. And then inhale, prepare to return to airplane and exhale, return to airplane. Arms to the side. Inhale to prepare and then exhale, bring the arms down to the floor, everything down to the floor. Very nice. Let's do alternating arms and legs prone. So one arm goes up and the other leg goes up. Yes, and then switch sides. So you're almost a little like a windmill maybe, up. And then switch, and switch, keep breathing, and switch, and switch, one more switch, one more set switch, both sides, and then Bring your arms down into a T when you finish so that we can do a thoracic stretch, prone thoracic twist stretch. Arms out in a T, looking to the right. This should be easy for you guys by now. Lift your right leg if you can. That's the, the move. Right leg goes up and over. The hips can move. What you don't want to move is the shoulders and the um, armpits, everything, all of the upper body stays on the floor. <clears throat> the lower body can move. And then come on back, return, and then look left. Left leg comes up, it goes over. You can bend the knee if you want to play around with that. Um, my internet is unstable, so um, you can keep going on this. If you look at Kathy and she's frozen, um, that's, you can keep going. You don't have to wait for Kathy to unfreeze. <laughs> Come on back. And see, she's frozen. And then switch to the other side. We'll do one more set. 
right leg, look to the right, and then switch, bring the leg back behind you, right leg back behind you, and then switch to the left. Look to the left and bring your left leg behind you, behind the other leg, and come on back. I, hopefully you guys know that one by now. You can, I can cue in shortcuts. Find your way onto your back for the um, Yoga Nidra. I'm going to stop my video. Lie on your back. You may want to put some towels under your head. You may want to put a washcloth over your eyes. And uh, you may want to put a blanket over your body. The idea is to find a, a comfortable position, warm and comfortable. Start to notice your breath. Breathing in and out and observing the abdomen as it rises and falls. Now bring your awareness to the center of your eyebrows, center of your throat, right shoulder, elbow, wrist, right thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, right wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, left shoulder, elbow, wrist, left thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, left wrist, left elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, spiritual heart center, right side of your chest, heart center, left side of your chest, heart center, navel center, center of your pelvis, right hip, knee, ankle, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, right ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, left hip, knee, ankle, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, left ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, navel center, heart center, center of your throat, center of your eyebrows. This completes your 61-point guided meditation. Just go ahead and take your time, but start to return your attention to your breath. You can extend your legs, bring your arms overhead, start to wiggle and stretch, create some space between your pelvis and your ribcage, additional space. Wiggle your fingers and toes, circle your ankles and your wrists. Hug your right knee to your chest and then your left. And then both knees. And rock from side to side. And roll towards the screen, towards, towards the computer. <laughs> Use your right hand to bring yourself up to seated to your favorite position. Unmute yourself so we can uh, say namaste to each other. I'm going to cancel the spotlight. I'm going to put my um, view into gallery view. I can't do that for you, though. You, if you want to share, I see everybody in tiles for namaste, which is very nice, I think. Um, you have to do that for yourself, as far as I know. You know if you find out, I can do and I would do it for you. Bring your hands together with your heart. 
press your um, hands together. Strong, strong, strong. Just for a little bit of extra upper body work. And then release all that. And lift your skull up, away from your shoulders. And then bob, roll forward without rounding the cervical spine. It's all in the skull. All of that movement is in the skull. Bowing and nodding to each other, honoring each other, the light in each other, and knowing that we are all, uh, all lit, all, li all lights and one light. And we'll close the class by saying to each other, Namaste. 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 Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>